So how do you name files and use PHP tags in order to run PHP scripts? The first thing that you have to remember is that if you're going to be creating PHP scripts, you need to name the files uh, with an extension .php. So not .txt, not .htm or .html. They need to end with .php. This is a big one that, that many people forget to do. And the thing is, is if you don't end your file with .php, the interpreter will not realize that it's a PHP script, and so the PHP script will not run. Beyond that, when you have your, your web page that, that's being loaded, you need to use the PHP tags so that the interpreter knows where the PHP code is within the web page and will be able to run the PHP code. So let's go over to the computer so I can show you how this works. So this is a very simple web page with a PHP script embedded within it. So in the beginning, we are going to print out PHP example in HTML under the H1 tag. So this will be the heading one style. It will state PHP example, and then we close heading one. Past that, we then call the PHP script. So this is where we open a PHP script and we tell the interpreter, past this, look for PHP code in order to run. We then have the very simple print function, and we are going to say hello world printed with PHP. So this is going to be printed out as a basic text in PHP. Then we end that, and then we close the PHP tag. So this tells the interpreter from here, look for PHP code, and this then this says, to stop looking for PHP code. So anything after this will not necessarily be in PHP. And this is a very simple PHP script. So what you have to remember is to open with a PHP tag and then close, close the PHP tag. From here, all we're going to do is we're going to then do file and then we're going to do save or save as, depending on whatever text editor you're using. And then the important thing to remember is that it needs to be .php at the end. So we can do, let's say, test php then we're going to say to leave it on the desktop and then we're going to click save so from here what we can see is that on the desktop we now have the the test.php script now what we're going to do is we're going to upload this to our website so this is the file manager for the website and we are going to upload we're going to choose file and we're going to go and click test and upload that so that should be uploaded now. If we hit refresh, and we go to public HTML, we can see the test.php file is there. So from here, if we go to silicondojo.com, one of the things we'll see is although that test.php file is there, we're not automatically being redirected to it. We have to actually point to it. So test.php. And so there we have the example of our code. So in H1 is PHP example, and then PHP has printed out hello world printed with PHP. So this shows you how HTML and PHP can be on a single web page. Now, if you are using your own domain name, so you want people to automatically be routed to this particular page, basically have this be the default page for your website, all you have to do is if you go you can rename or you can initially name your PHP script and um, go to rename. And all you have to do is you just have to name it to index.php. By naming it to index.php, that will tell the web server this is the default web page for your website. So now that that's been done, we can go, we can open up silicondojo.com and we automatically go to the PHP script. So this is a basic example of how to write a PHP script and how to name a PHP script. It's important to remember the, the ending extension does have to be .php. You open up your PHP script with the PHP tag and then you close it. And that's really all you have to do for PHP code. So that's how to name a PHP script file and how to use the PHP tags in order to run a PHP script on a web page. It's relatively simple to do, but as with all things in coding, if you don't do it absolutely perfectly, absolutely how you're supposed to, your code won't run. So that was how to name PHP files and how to use the PHP tags, and that's why it's important.